Lady Deathstrike is going to be the next Series 5 guard added to Marvel Snap. She is going to cost 6,000 tokens. So is this card worth picking up with your precious, precious tokens? Or is this a pass? Now, a lot of people seem pretty amped about this card. They're saying that this is the card they're going to pick up this month. But I am not entirely sold. She's a 5-3 on reveal. Destroy each card here with less power than this. So basically, at a base stat line, she's going to destroy everything at that location, including including your side of the board that has two or less power. Now, I'll have my final verdict on this card at the end of the video, but I also wanted to quickly note about the cards that you could open up in the spotlight caches during her week, and that is Modoc and Stature being the featured cards. I find it a little bit weird because they're both Series 4. We already had no Series drops this month. We have all cards being released at Series 5, and now we have a weird spotlight cache where two of the cards are lesser value than typically found. Normally, there's at least one Series 5 card or a big bad, and then, you know, they're, they're the equivalent of like 6,000 tokens and makes it a lot more enticing to open up a spotlight cast that week because you might get the new card which probably costs 6,000 tokens, or it's another card that is equivalently 6,000 tokens. But in this instance, you either open up Lady Deathstrike, which would be the best if you're shooting for that, or a 3,000 token equivalent card in Modoc or Stature, or a random card, or if you have a lot of them, it's going to be a duplicate and there's only 1,000 tokens. I just don't quite see the value, and then having to cough up 6,000 tokens for Lady Deathstrike is definitely influencing my decision, but we have to understand this new card. So we're going to talk about mechanics, counters synergies and i got some really fun theory crafted deck lists for you guys here today so let's get to it so how does this card work well she does not destroy unrevealed cards this is worth noting because maybe you want your opponent to have priority so that you have more opportunities to destroy more cards on their side of the board now this could backfire because it also provides more opportunities for them to counter so i was thinking that maybe ghost could have her time to shine you know you have ghost on the board guarantee that you're going to reveal second but i'm not too sold on that synergy but it's worth noting regardless it's also going to work with cerebro let's go cerebro is eating good tonight cerebro 3 is on the menu uh so a quick uh, experiment that i did to make sure that this works is i was playing cerebro 2 and i played brood and brood got the power from cerebro and then the broodlings were summoned and then their power was then applied so the order of operations right is that the ongoing effect applies the honor reveal triggers and then if of course it's summoning minions then the ongoing will then apply to those so that's how it works okay then there's on reveal buffs will apply before her ability triggers this is also worth noting but we already kind of knew this a quick example is shuri and black panther right shuri is going to double the power of black panther bringing it from four to eight and then black panther's ability is going to trigger bring it from eight to 16 so with lady deathstrike shuri would buff lady deathstrike going to six power and then she's going to destroy everything with five or less power at that location which is going to include shuri which kind of sets up a really nice arnim zola play but a big psa with this card is that it's going to destroy your board as well it is reciprocal which can actually work to your benefit i think this is actually one of the greater strengths that lady death strike has because there's a lot of synergy cards with like bucky barnes or nova that you want to destroy so you can do that with lady death strike while also disrupting your opponent and that is why i have it as the number one pro for this card is that it is a new destroy enabler right we've got carnage venom all those kind of cards that are going to enable destruction on your side of the board to help your synergies your strategy she is going to do that while also hurting your opponent's strategy and game plan. So I really love that aspect of Lady Deathstrike. But the best, probably the best part that a lot of people are stoked about is that it's a Dracula counter. Finally, Dracula can be countered. You know, Cosmo wasn't working, Enchantress wasn't working. There was no way to stop this guy from getting crazy amounts of power. Well, now Lady Deathstrike is the number one counter. She's absolutely going to ruin the day of those discard players uh, because Dracula is going to get annihilated before I could ever hope to get any power. And that goes for Iron Man, Cerebro, and a lot of low power cards that have really big effects. Now, the problem is that Enchantress can ruin a lot of those. So really, Dracula is the only niche one that I see that Lady Deathstrike can get. Like even maybe Bishop before it grows out of control. Maybe, maybe, you gotta watch out. But the surprise factor is real here. I think, you know, aside from the first week of release when people are kind of anticipating that that card might be played, afterwards, I don't think it's gonna be the most popular card. 
which might open it up for some really big swings. Your opponent doesn't anticipate it, just kind of leaves those low power cards there, and they get destroyed by Lady Deathstrike. So I do like that aspect of this card, but there's a lot of cons here that I'm not too stoked about. For instance, it has a low impact in a lot of matchups. Like a few cards that kind of overlap with Lady Deathstrike are Shang-Chi and Killmonger, two of the most popular cards, and I think they do their job a lot better than she does. She requires a lot of support to get that, that scaling of power to to actually destroy meaningful cards. Otherwise, why are you not just running Killmonger? If they have two or less power, they're probably one drops, or maybe they're the, you know, like I was mentioning that Iron Man, that Dracula, it could be that case scenario. But Killmonger is going to do a lot of what Lady Deathstrike already was going to do, and she costs two more. So I, I just don't love that aspect of this card. And then also Shang-Chi is going to get rid of those high power cards, which are actually the ones winning the location. If you play Lady Deathstrike, and yeah, you destroyed like three cards at the location, but you left the Dark Hawk that has like 12 power, well, you might not be winning that location that's your turn five that you just played or maybe even your turn six with a one drop that's not all that great so i'm a little bit cautious when it comes to this card and the amount of setup that you got to put into the card to actually get full value and then not really having a big impact in a lot of matchups and then also being a competitive five cost in your decks it's tough to justify putting a lot of five drops they often get cut for other things the six drop makes sense because that's your big final turn but other than that, it's like, when do I even really want to play this five drop if it's not winning me a lane like Professor X can or a few others or a core to my deck strategy? Instead, of this is a bit of a support card that requires its own support, and I just don't see how it's going to work in a lot of lists. Now, I do have some really fun ones, which I'm excited to get to. Uh, but it's again, it's worth noting this is costing 6,000 tokens, and that is such a heavy influencer in the decision-making process for picking up this card or not. But maybe you don't want to pick up the card. Maybe you, when it's released, you just want to counter everybody who got the new shiny thing. So let's talk about some counters. Okay, so I pretty much always have these counters here because they're just really common tech cards that do a lot against particularly destroy or on reveals. And that is Cosmo, who's going to shut down all the on reveals. So of course, this little dog is going to completely ruin Death Strike players' dreams. And then you got Armor and Professor X doing a very similar effect, making it difficult to decide where to play Lady Death Strike, and also just completely shutting her down if it's played on the same turn. But a couple of the cooler counters that I was thinking about was like move cards like Juggernaut or Spider-Man. So they're going to really disrupt Lady Deathstrike. If you have priority, you play Juggernaut, you move their Deathstrike to a different location, maybe you're going to destroy cards that they did not want to have destroyed. And then it goes to a location where it doesn't even destroy anything on your side of the board. That could be pretty spicy. Blue Marvel's an actually another one and really anything that gives power because if they were expecting a certain threshold to destroy under uh, and then you increase that threshold you might save a bunch of your cards and then lastly daredevil daredevil really only applies if they end up deciding to play it on turn five but maybe you really discourage them from playing on turn five and then they have to hold it for turn six which is not ideal i think with this card you kind of want to do it before the final bell so daredevil is a nice you know little, little card to put out there and kind of anticipate where they're going to play that destruction and you know play around it if you're running the daredevil professor x combo you do not have have to worry about Lady Deathstrike. Most scenarios, you're going to be just fine. Okay, but here are some key synergies and some deck lists that I came up with. So Shuri, as we talked about, buffing her power and then making it a much bigger destroy. Fantastic. Artem Zola is sneaky and with Shuri as well is just super fun. I'll actually bring you guys to one of my first deck lists. On the far right here, we got Lady and the Ramp. So the idea being that we're going to use Electro to ramp up into some of these cards. We don't need to, but if we can, we will. And then we're going to play, I don't know, like Shuri into Black Panther Artem Zola if we need to. That's an available combo. Or we do Shuri into Lady Deathstrike and then Artem Zola. That's great too because Deathstrike's going to be at six power. She's going to be the only card on that side of the board on our side of the board because we destroyed Shuri anyways and then Armzola is a guaranteed hit then he's gonna destroy everything at the other locations that has five or less power and maybe even more than that because we have Okoye and Nakia here to further buff our cards so it's you know it's a couple of straightforward strategies but i also got the iron lad and absorbing man if iron lad hits lady death strike that's easy five under don't even need to buff lady death strike that's pretty good absorbing man's five power as well we could you know if we don't have arnim zola but we need to destroy a different lane absorbing man's going to be that surprise factor 
Do I kind of like, you know, messing around with the destroys? I think this is the most gimmicky list that I have here, the most fun factor list. Uh, it does have a pretty boring combo, though, and Shuri, Black Panther, Arnim Zola, but hey, you know, you got to put some good cards in the list every now and then. Okay, then we also got Infinity Strike. So this is taking advantage of Bucky Barnes and just generally the destroy package. But we also have Thanos in here. Thanos is just a great way to rip through the deck by playing those Infinity Stones, and they all cost one, which makes it really easy for Killmonger to destroy them and death to cost zero. Lady Deathstrike is another enabler for that, right? We can destroy our Bucky Barnes plus two other stones or whatever else we got going on there and disrupt whatever our opponent is doing on their side of the board. So turn six, we can play Thanos and death and it's going to be a pretty big power swing. But the one I'm most excited about, and it's definitely like if I somehow get Lady Deathstrike at some point, then this is going to be the number one deck list I want to try is Lady Bro, aka Cerebro 3. So we got Cerebro and Mystique, classic combo. We got Lady Deathstrike as the later end of the game plan, and we got Professor X because that's just such a fantastic value play when you got Cerebro on the board. Iron Man because we got Bast, right, to buff up the Cerebro, Mystique, and Iron Man to the three power threshold so that they all reap the rewards of that Cerebro play. We got Jeff to jump into the Professor X lane if we need or just jump wherever he's got to go. Scarlet Witch, just a good tech card. Sentinels to provide a lot of three power cards on the board. Uh, Shang-Chi, Killmonger, Juggernaut is a bunch of tech options to deal with that or whatever our opponent is doing. There, this, less, th this list seems insane. Say. Now, it doesn't have Luke Cage. That could be a card that you might want to run in here so that you don't get those power reductions, which can be the worst thing to happen to a Cerebro player, or power increases. That's always, you know, whenever you're playing Cerebro, it's going to be tough. You're not going to hit the combo every time, but geez, it's fun. We even have Mystique, you know, latching onto the Iron Man play. So if we just do Bass and then you got those two kicking around, that's fantastic value. So I, I think this deck is super legit. I Honestly, I, I've been playing this a bunch without Lady Deathstrike and it's been doing great. And I think Lady Deathstrike only makes this even better because if we have Cerebro and Mystique out there, that's plus four four power. That's a seven power death strike. She's going to destroy everything with six and under. And that is what I'm talking about. Maybe we actually make this card worth it, but maybe not. Maybe it's too gimmicky. <laughs> Anyways, it looks pretty fun. Okay. I'm going to have these deck lists and a little bit more of a detailed guide on these on the article on snap.fan. So definitely check it out. I'll have the link in the description below. That should be going live probably Sunday, Monday, one of those days before this card actually drops into Marvel snap. Now, is this a snap or is this a pass? Well, if you've been listening to the video, I've kind of hinted that this is a pass for me. And it's too bad because honestly, I think if it had been a series four release at 3000 tokens, I would have picked it up. It would have been fun enough and, you know, justified the cost. But because I just don't think it's going to be overly meta relevant, I think it's only going to be in a few niche lists like I was showing there. Like, I just don't see how it's worth spending 6,000 tokens to pick this card up. And on top of that, using a spotlight cash when your other options for the rewards are not that enticing. So it's a bit disappointing for me. Uh, I do really like the variants. I think the card is going to be a lot of fun. If you were interested in picking it up, you know, pick it up. This is not just, this is just for me. This is just my opinion. Uh, but a lot of people are excited about this card and are going to uh, grab it on release. And I'm happy for you. Definitely do it. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you are new to the channel, we do this every single week with all the new cards. So definitely snap subscribe to stay tuned. And anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.